Hi there, this is Ruben from Dutch Round 1. Thanks again for coming by. Thanks for watching another episode. As always, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your support. Today we are going to look at ways at how to sound smarter when speaking Dutch. But before we do that, remember to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want more content and let me know in the comments if this video was useful for you. But without much further ado, let's go straight to the lesson. So there we go. So basically today we are going to take a look at the signal words in Dutch of signal worden. Now these kind of words are used to connect sentences, to give an extra emphasis and they're quite useful if you're talking or if you're writing because it makes your text or your speech more fluid. So the first one we'll take a look at is inderdaad. Inderdaad is indeed. So if you look at the examples, 2 plus 2 is 4. Inderdaad, dat klopt. Of er is inderdaad een probleem. So the translation would be 2 plus 2 is 4. Indeed, that is correct. Oh, indeed, there is a problem for the second example. So the first one, indeed, is inderdaad. We'll take a look at another one, and these these ones come in threefold, and that is ten eerste, ten tweede, and ten derde. Now that basically is firstly, secondly, and thirdly. These ones are quite useful when you want to make an argument, and you have um, different things you want to say. So basically you can say firstly, secondly, and thirdly. Ten eerste wil ik iedereen begroeten, so first of all, I want to greet everybody. Ten tweede wil ik iedereen bedanken. Secondly, I want to thank everybody. And ten derde, thirdly, wil ik iedereen feliciteren. So I want to congratulate everybody. Quite useful if you have to do an enumeration. Alright, so we go to the next one. And the next one is bijvoorbeeld. Bijvoorbeeld is for example. As you look at the examples, er zijn veel mooie landen in de wereld. Neem nu bijvoorbeeld Namibië. There's many beautiful countries in the world. Take as an example, or take for example, Namibia. Niet al het voedsel is gezond. Dat geldt bijvoorbeeld voor suiker. So not all food is healthy. That is valent, for instance, for example, for sugar. We go to the next one. This one is quite useful if you have an opposition. If you want to make a little bit of a contrast in your sentence, then you have enerzijds and anderzijds. Enerzijds means on the one hand, and then anderzijds means on the other hand. So, enerzijds zijn veel mensen niet akkoord met dit beleid, maar anderzijds is er ook geen alternatief. So, on the one hand, many people don't agree with this policy. However, on the other hand, or but on the other hand, there is no alternative. This is enerzijds en anderzijds. Quite useful. So the next one is onder andere. Onder andere means among other, among other things. Like if you look at the example, tijdens het gesprek ging het onder andere over de maatschappij, het onderwijs en sport. So during the conversation, um, they were speaking among other things, literally about society, education and sport. So that is onder andere. So the next one is door middel van. Door middel van means by means of. So we take a look at the examples. Door middel van onderhandelingen kunnen wij dit conflict oplossen. Door middel van een betere samenwerking zullen beide partijen elkaar opnieuw vertrouwen. So I'll translate that for you. By means of negotiations or through negotiations we can solve this conflict. Or by means or through a better cooperation both parties will trust each other again. So that was by means of door middle van. We go to the next one in plaats van will translate as instead of in uh, English. So if you look at the examples, the instructies worden ingewikkelder in plaats van eenvoudiger of in plaats van ons meer tijd te geven hebben ze de termijn verkort. So the instructions become more complicated instead of easier or more straightforward and the next one is instead of giving us more time they have shortened the deadline so that is in plaats van instead of quite useful also 
Then we go to the next one, te wijten aan. Te wijten aan, in English we translate it as due to. So, te wijten aan het slechte weer gaat de voetbalwedstrijd niet door. Due to the bad weather, the football match does not take place. Of de treinen rijden vandaag niet en dat is te wijten aan de algemene staking van het vervoerspersoneel. So the trains do not drive today and that is due to the general strike of the transport personnel. We go to the next one and that one is in vergelijking met. In vergelijking met uh, is in comparison with and then if you look at the second example there I wrote compared to and that is vergeleken met. A little difference, but you can use them basically for the same meaning. So the first one is, in vergelijking met de grootte van het heelal, is de aarde maar een kleine planeet. So in comparison with the size of the universe, the earth is but a small planet. And the next one is, vergeleken met vorig jaar zijn de cijfers dit jaar veel beter. Compared to last year, the numbers of this year are a lot better. Okay, we go to the next one, tijdens. Tijdens is quite useful, it means during. Tijdens de vergadering waren er veel mensen die op hun telefoon keken. During the meeting, there were many people who were watching their phones. Uh, of tijdens de onderhandelingen hebben beide partijen veel fouten gemaakt. During the negotiations, both parties have made a lot of mistakes. Tijdens is during and also quite useful. We'll go to the next one and we'll go to who well or we'll go to all who well. Uh, you can translate that one as although. You will see who well a little bit more. All who well is maybe the older version, but sporadically you might see it popping up from time to time. So if you look at the examples, who well het koud was, speelden de kinderen buiten. Although it was cold, the children were playing outside. Okay, the next one is, um, or the next example, alhoewel ik het niet met je eens ben, respecteer ik je mening. Although I do not agree with you, I do respect your opinion. Okay, we'll go to the next one, which is zoals, uh, examples, hij is een heel technische speler, hij kan dribbelen zoals Messi. Of veel landen, zoals België, Nederland en Frankrijk, hebben last van overstromingen. The first example I'll translate it for you. He's a very technical player. He can dribble as Messi or like Messi. So else. Then we go to the second example and that is veel landen, zoals België, Nederland en Frankrijk hebben last van overstromingen. So basically many countries and then it's not as or like, but it's such as Belgium, the Netherlands and France have problems with floods or literally are burdened with floods okay the next word is eigenlijk eigenlijk uh, translated in english is actually all right take a look at the examples dit is eigenlijk een belachelijke situatie of what will je eigenlijk i'll translate them for you this is actually a ridiculous situation or what do you want actually all right so these two eigenlijk is actually then we go to the next one, and the next one is tenzij. Tenzij, we translate it as unless in English. Look at the examples. Niemand zal dit aanvaarden tenzij de situatie verandert. Nobody will accept this unless the situation changes. And then the next one. Tenzij de weersvoorspellingen veranderen, zullen ze dit jaar niet op vakantie gaan. Unless the weather predictions are not changing, they will not go on holiday this year. Tenzij means unless. We'll go to the next one, and the next one is kortom. Kortom you can translate in Dutch as in short, in brief, or in a nutshell. Right? Take a look at the examples. Kortom, er is nog veel te doen. So, in a nutshell, in brief, there's still a lot to be done. And the next one is... Kortom, er is geen reden tot bezorgdheid. Translated freely is, in a nutshell, in short, there is no reason to worry. Alright, we go to the next one, and that is indien. Indien is the older version of als, and as you know, als in Dutch means if. Indien er geen verandering in de zaak komt, zullen we het evenement tot volgend jaar moeten uitstellen. 
if there will be no change in this matter, we will have to postpone the event until next year. Or, indien we geen bonus krijgen op het einde van het jaar, zal ik mijn nieuwe auto niet kunnen kopen. If we do not get a bonus at the end of the year, I will not be able to buy my new car. Indien the older version of ours, but sometimes you'll see it popping up. Alright, then we go to in tussen. In tussen is in the meantime or in the meanwhile. In tussen hebben we 10 winkels geopend. In the meantime, we have opened 10 shops. Intussen is de wereldbevolking verdubbeld. In the meantime, world population has doubled. Intussen, intussen, in the meantime, or in the meanwhile. We'll go to the next one, and the next one is daarnaast. Daarnaast you can translate as besides, in addition to, additionally. Alright? We moeten het schoolsysteem verbeteren, en daarnaast moet het ondernemerschap gestimuleerd worden. We have to improve the school system and additionally, in addition to that, on top of that, we have to stimulate the entrepreneurship. So daarnaast can be besides, on top of that, in addition or additionally. Right? We go to the next one and the next one is als gevolg van. And this one can be translated in English as as a result of. Als gevolg van de crisis hebben veel mensen hun werk verloren. As a result of the crisis, many people have lost their job. Or, als gevolg van deze nieuwe akkoorden ziet de toekomst er rooskleurig uit. As a result of these new agreements or treaties, the future is looking rosy. Right? That one is als gevolg van, as a result of. Alright, then we go to bovendien. Bovendien can be furthermore or especially also moreover. De studenten hebben dit jaar hard gewerkt. Bovendien zijn de leraars heel tevreden met hun houding en inzet. So the students have worked very hard this year. Moreover, the teachers are very happy with their attitude and their efforts. Bovendien, moreover. So this was the end of our presentation today. So 20 words which will make you look smarter in Dutch when you use them and especially when you try and connect your writing or your speech. I want to thank you again for watching. Remember to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you want more content and let me know in the comments if this lesson was useful for you. I want to thank you again. I wish you a great day and stay tuned for another episode of Dutch Round 1. Ciao.